Lauren Roser, who is a, a visual artist and a composer and many other things. We won't get into his day job, but I want to get him back for another half hour to talk about his day job. Uh, but that's another story. We're going to focus on his work as an artist and as a, perform as a composer. And um, uh, welcome to the show, Lauren. Good oh. to have you on. And, uh, <clears throat> well, you're a New Yorker, right? You're I am. You're a New Yorker. And uh, what do you think of... Um, what do you think of New York these days? Oh, it's just a great city still. You love it? Huh? Yeah. I Were you born and raised here, or did you come? Well, my dad was a diplomat, so we traveled until I was about four, and then we settled here. And then I went out for graduate school to California. I was there for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I've lived in New York. I see. Okay, yeah. great. And uh, so what, do, what, what kind of work? We're going to show a clip of, of your stuff, but tell us a little bit about your work. Well, I do a lot of uh, sort of experimental video and computer-generated work and mm -hmm. virtual reality. Wow. So this would be com constructed within the computer. Did that come out of your studies, you know, computer work, or is it something you taught yourself later on? Well, I, I'm an architect, so that it originally was for work, and then yeah. I branched out into my art. Right, to turn it into an art. Uh, what, how, why is, how is the computer nowadays important to be an architect? I mean, I used to see draftsmen drawing in rooms when my dad was an engineer and see all those guys drawing all that stuff. They don't do that anymore. Those well, guys. for example, it was a sad day when the architect's exam became computerized because we used to have to carry our drawing boards to Columbus Circle on our backs, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and now it's totally computerized. So people, right. people don't know how to draw anymore. Oh, that's sad. sad. We're losing yeah. a lot of things like art and, and uh, large albums. We're losing writing. We saw a movie about the Civil War, and everybody in the Civil War era is writing these incredible. They're totally like total hillbillies living in the woods, and they're writing these incredible letters that nobody today could write. And I can tell you, I'm a teacher. You know, oh, it's like the dialogue in the old yeah. movies. Just so it's deep. It's beautiful. much deeper. People can't the use of can, language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know why we've gotten too slangy. I, and I, I'm speaking. I was like the, one of the worst offenders of all time. Uh, but anyway, here we are talking about art. And uh, what are we going to watch? We're going to see a video to begin with to sort of set us up. Well, this, these are three short videos glommed together. Yeah. Um, and they are earlier sections of, of uh, my work. A lot of it done uh, with my partner, Nina Ko. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all almost all done on the computer. Uh, some of the work is uh, her paintings taken from her large five-foot paintings where we animated the painting. The second mm -hmm. piece sure. is done like that. I see. And I, I did the music for it. Okay. So we're going to watch it now. Let's go to the video, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we saw.
All right, Lauren Roser, welcome again. Oh. That was wonderful. What were we watching? That was wonderful. Oh, thanks so much, Paul, for, for having us on. Well, these are experimental videos that I did with my partner. Uh-huh. And, uh, and what was the first one? The second one in the middle, you said it's, I like that name, Nude Ascending a Database. Nude Descending a Database. Descending yeah. a, the, the a one, database, yeah. right? And that's what she was doing, right? Absolutely. And it said buy art in the background? Yes. <laughs> Does it work that people buy art after they watch it? It hasn't really worked yet. <laughs> the only one day There's always the future. Yeah. Right, right. So, and now it's based on Nina's work. The, the the painting that had the uh, the sort of Asian statue, it seemed like. Uh, yes, those are Tang ladies uh, in, What's in the Tang snow. What's a Tang lady? Well, from the Tang Dynasty, uh, uh -huh. 800 AD. Right, so there's a big Asian connection to this. And you mentioned, you said you were, you're were Asian and that your father was French, I guess, or Alsace. Well, I mean, I'm fourth generation on both sides, but his family uh -huh. was originally French, uh, Alsatian. Yes. And uh, my mother's family's from southern China. Right, right. And that does, uh, that does form your art or Nina's art? Or both uh, of you? Both of us, I think. I think, yeah, right, right. We've right. taken many trips to Asia, and we, we, uh -huh. we're fond of it. Right, great. What is the Tang woman, the Tang dynasty? Why that? Why did you choose that? Well, uh, my partner is, is fascinated with the culture of the Tang dynasty. It was a great period where uh, poetry and music, mm -hmm. uh, writing, sure. and, and uh, painting were What year? What, what period? How long? It was around it? 800 A.D. Oh, wow. So yeah. we were talking about 1,200 years ago. Right? A long time ago. Medieval times, before medieval times in yeah. Europe. She has a really nice painting <clears throat> where... So there was culture explosion happening in China and Asia. At the time, there was what we call the Dark Ages here when nothing was going on. Sure. Or next to nothing. They were still illuminating things. There was stuff going on, but... It wasn't. I guess it, it was like Charlemagne. And yeah, that. right, right. Those guys, right? Time, yeah. Right. So all this was going on, writing and art and all these things were going on in Tog Nice. And you were saying, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, it was a very beautiful period. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you were saying... Uh, oh, well, was, was she has a wonderful painting where she has listed out the, the different dynasties. And then at the top, she has Chanel, mm -hmm. sort of uh, the, modern, the right. modern cultural icon. Right, right, of mm -hmm. China. <coughs> so uh, tell me a little bit of how you go about doing this. What what is the uh, well the process, process? The process is just to start sketching in the computer and pulling things together and animating mm -hmm. them, moving them. I see. How did you get to do that? How what turn? What uh, you said it was from your work as an architect started you out on this. That's how I first learned it because when people spend a lot of money on something, they like to know what it's going to look like. So mm -hmm. it was very important uh, architectural visualization. I see. So I learned the skill for that, but then I applied it to my own work. Mm -hmm. And w what do you like? How did you create? Uh, you, you what? What program do you use to do that? Is there a specific program? Um, that you use? I use Maya and Max, a lot of different programs <coughs> that do that. How, yeah. like for example, the, the the nude who is descending the uh, database. How did you create her? I just sculpted her. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. You make like the little triangles and everything and connect them up. I mean, I've seen a friend of mine do that. He like creates for Second Life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, different things, right? Okay, so uh, <coughs> what what motivates you to do it? What's, what's your feeling? What, is it, what does it mean to you, this work? What well, are you trying to, tr what kind of feeling are you trying I, to I have? love uh, exploring space. Mm -hmm. And um, I have I have some drawings here. Uh, yeah, yeah, some more, let's take a look yeah. at them. Yeah. These are some, uh, some designs. All right, so you have, uh, for example, this. Now, are these going to be like structures that you're planning on building? They're sort of futuristic fantasies, you know. Uh -huh. um, they're within a game engine, so you can explore them in virtual reality or... That means uh, like Second Life, you go in, in there an and walk around way. and interact yeah. with... Which is a, a dream for an architect to be able to... Right. Because architecture is like music, you can only... Appreciate it over time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You right. can't you can't grasp it all at once. You mean we appreciate the pyramids more than the people at the time did? They just saw it as like that was a lot of work, <laughs> <laughs> and now we look at it and say, "Wow, how wonderful!" <laughs> right? And yeah, you said so. That's true. But I was right, right? I, I hit it, right? Yeah. At the time, it would have just been seen as a big, as a functionary build building, and today it's seen as art. Well, I think there was a great deal of fear involved with with the oh, pyramids. You, oh, the pyramids are making them build it because so many people died making them. Yeah. Oh, that like they might explode or something. Like one of them, I saw some video, one of them actually exploded, the first one. Oh, I didn't see Yeah, that. no, they were building it and they had some engineering problems and the darn thing exploded. And oh. it's still there. And they found that when they started digging in the pile of rubble, they never knew why it had a big hole in the side and it was bricks on the bottom. And they started digging in and they found the bones of all the dead wow, people who got killed. Scary. Like hundreds of people got killed. 
Well, I guess the first keep, construction accident in history. Right? To keep the treasure secret, I guess, yeah. was the reason that people were killed, I think. Oh, oh that as well, too. Yeah. But I thought in the construction of them, people That, were too, killed. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. died. Right. All right. I love, I've been to the pyramids. I've been inside of them. Oh, I wonderful. love the pyramids. Right. I have yet to be to China, though. I want to really go and see all those things. You know, oh, there's some fa to. fantastic things. I know, there. I know. But for now, now, the farthest east I've gone is the pyramids, which were amazing. Uh, so, okay, great. So, uh, let's, uh, now, uh, you have on the back here, it's very interesting. Let me, let me take it out and uh, show people. It's a, uh, now you have, what is this all about? This is somebody, it looks like, a, it looks like a, a, like a film noir type of thing from the 50s, mm. you know, like a science fiction. Uh, well, this, this is a piece I collaborated with uh, some performance artists, uh, an international art piece I did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. His name, the primary person is Stellark. His name is Stellark. He's an Australian mm -hmm. performance artist. And he was in a gallery mm -hmm. for five days yeah. uh, with a headset on. And I fed him audio from New York. Oh, really? And then uh, Robert Luke Mason, a writer who wor writes for The Guardian, he fed him the video from London. Mm -hmm. And then his arm was controlled by a robotic device he had constructed that was controlled over the internet. And this is for a period of five days. And his people could make his arm move? Yeah, he had no control. Who over would it. make the arm move? Who would Any, anyone on the internet. Just uh, the anyone on the internet could Totally move open. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, so this is all being fed to him, and you could get on the internet and make it. Did people like try and mess with his head, like try and make his head? I'm sure they did. Oh, <laughs> really? Right? And he, uh, uh, <laughs> right? Oh, that's a movie, but too. That's a sci-fi movie. It's right? like the ultimate disassociation. Is that the future? Is that what we have to look forward to? Uh, that's what we have like to look out for. ultimate social I control, think. right? They'll just put us in a suit and make us do anything well, we I want. Well, I think with the cell phone, it's sort of already happened. that uh, we've, we've lost control of our yeah. selves, in a way. Well, do you feel that when you do this artwork that you're sort of contributing to this uh, um, totally over-digitized, uh, visualized, uh, artificial world that we seem to be in? Well, Especially our kids seem to be in. You know, I, I really feel that um, th there's a more positive look at it than that technology can be a very constructive thing as well. And I'm hoping to pave the way for people not to be so afraid of artificial intelligence and these other things, because mm -hmm. they can lead to some wonderful freedoms for people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I mean, to, uh, you know, for a person who might uh, be differently able, the suit like th made like this, you know, could allow you to walk around and do things you couldn't do normally, right? Well, he, he does focus on the dark side. He has another piece called Propel uh -huh. that, that I wasn't involved in, but um, he's yanked around for 45 minutes by a 14-foot industrial robot. Oh, no. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. I right? want to do a VR recreation of that piece. Oh, my God. Really? Mm. What's, yeah. a v what's a VR recreation? Tell the recreation. Tell folks who might not know anything. Oh, well, virtual reality in that you wonder what it was like from his eyes being, mm. you know, moved around by this giant crane. I had a chance to put on VR goggles one time, good nice ones, like a good one with a big computer yeah, from what'd feeding you think? it. It was a hockey game, and <laughs> it, when you put on the glasses, you were in the middle of the ice, and the hockey players were coming at you from all different directions. You, you were the puck. I, mean, I died for the ground. I mean, I, was, <laughs> I could not. It was impossible not to go for cover. It was impossible. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Like, it was, it was like literally the guy would come after you, and I would like jump into other, <laughs> and, uh, other people would be laughing. At, you know, I was like, oh my god, you know, it was the most amazing thing. I'm, I'm surprised they don't have um, amusement rides like that. And, and maybe they do. I don't. Hmm. It was shocking. I yeah, never it thought it was can so be very real. powerful. I think powerful experience. Yeah. I know the UN has been using it to try to uh, garner more support for refugees mm -hmm. because it uh, really grips you emotionally. I oh think. yeah, you actually be in a refugee camp. Yeah, you put those the, glasses the, yeah. on. Right, you feel like you're there. Yeah. Wow, but it seems like the first thing they use it for is porn. <laughs> It's the first thing they use it for. Like the first thing you read about in the paper, right? All right. So uh, great. Um, so okay, that's interesting. So, are you any working? What what kind of projects are you working on now? Are you? Well, I just uh, w helped another performance artist uh, last week at the Judson, mm -hmm. and um, that's I, down the village, the Judson Church, right? Yeah, right, right across. Um, and her piece was about dealing with all the spam that you get sent. And she had reels of all her, you know, junk mail. Mm -hmm. um, rolled up just just reams of it reams of it that's yeah. how much it is how was that a year's worth or something or yeah probably yeah, it's a lot. right as you rolled up like in like in a toilet paper roll or something like that yeah or? like a huge roll that she unrolled and then she had another performance artist uh, with her mm -hmm. and uh, i played saxophone for it mm -hmm. it's just a legendary space though the judson church it's amazing uh -huh, how, yeah. how long it's been space. around yeah yeah 
And so, okay, great. So, how did what was your role in that? Oh, you played sax. Right? Played sax. Oh, you play sax too. We, we're not getting a chance to play, but you played with uh, Bo Diddley. I, I have. Uh, I did get a chance to jam with him. It was a uh -huh. glorious one. Oh wow, one. that's great. I wish I had video of that. That'd be great. Uh, Mm. Well, maybe maybe next time I, I yeah. Can. Well, you have to come on my radio show on WBAI when I finally get one, and they're using me on the news. I do the news on WBAI. Oh, that would be great. Every night I do the news on WBAI ninety nine point five FM every night at six p.m. Monday through or Tuesday through Friday. All right. So, um, uh, all right. Tell us uh, what 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 are your dreams? What do you dream of as far as like if you had all the money and all the influence that you needed? What would you do? What would you create? Is there any great creation in your head that wants to come out? Well, to be honest, I, I really love exploring new new things, mm -hmm. like an explorer. I mean, I love synthesizers and just ways of creating things that people haven't seen before. I, I find that mm -hmm. I want to be an explorer of, of yeah. artistic things. That's that's the greatest joy for me. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's your next area of exploration? Well, I, I want to combine... Um, Synthesized music and um, immersive audio mm -hmm. with virtual reality okay. to create um, a spatial experience where the the sound and the form work together. I've I've been experimenting with some code mm -hmm. um, on a couple of platforms where I create geometry and audio simultaneously mm -hmm. and. Now there's ways to spatialize the audio in a fascinating way. So it creates an artwork that's, you know, very immersive. Spatialize the audio like five channel. Like st we used to have stereo, then there was quadraphonic, and now we have five point one. And sure, the music's coming at you from every different direction. But now they're able to get more of the, the elevation, and it's not just uh, a flat plane, but All right. the whole oh, right. the whole space. Down on top Ambisonics of and right. yeah. What they call it? Ambisonics, first, second, third oh, order ambience, ambisonic. sound. Uh, ambisonics. Yeah. Well, it's it's. Um, a way to get a more distinct sound field, I guess. Uh huh. And distinct it, sound field, like you really feel like the, the instruments are around you. Well, not only not only in a, a plane around you, like a two D world, yeah. but like a three D one where you, something is above you, something's behind you. Right. And like you were sitting in the middle of the orchestra. Yeah. Right. And what it would be like to be like the bassoon player or something. Or in a rock band, uh -huh. which which is a fun experience. Right. The drummer intense. is really in the middle of everything, right? Absolutely. The drummer has everybody standing around them. Yeah, I play in a um, jazz collective, about mm -hmm. a six or seven piece, which is kind of like Miles Davis, 70s. Mm -hmm. I love that stuff. Yeah, it's really, it's really it fun. Yeah. All right, great. That was pretty hot music. Uh, what was I just reason to? Uh, in a Silent Way, I love that. Is that yeah, it's a great yeah, album. Beautiful song. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, so uh, so tell, tell about how, how do you and Nina collaborate? Well, we, especially it's... In the planning stage, we run ideas off right. each other. What is Nina? Nina is a visual artist as well. She's many things. She's probably most famous as a photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in quite a few books. Uh -huh. um, but now she does a lot of experimental video, and she does sculpture and painting mm -hmm. as well. She did her own color photography, uh, you know, I see. doing her own prints. And how do you, her and you work together? Well, we share a, a love of technology. Just the fact that she yes. would learn how to do yeah. color printing, uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we enjoy especially new and modern things, futurist right. uh, design, which right. I think is not necessarily robotic, but could be an enhancement to humanity. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's our hope, is to promote that and make it more palatable to people. What do you mean by enhancement to humanity? Well, there's, in the art world, there's sort of a movement about um, a fear of Asian futurism, saying that... Uh, Technology is is less humane, mm -hmm. but I th I think it's also it's it can expand the abilities of human humanness. For example, the synthesizer can create sounds that were never possible before, and uh, just because they're not people dissed it when it first came out, and now everybody uses it. Oh, well, certainly the musicians' you unions <laughs> yeah. disliked it. Didn't like it, right? But now, like Carnegie Hall, you can. That's the next place you'll see one, maybe one day. I don't know. This Perhaps. Thing. Yeah, they're a little bit resistant to it. Then look at a pipe organ. It's just. It's like an incredible synthesizer. Right, People machine, love those. Right, yeah, right, right, it's right. a machine that's glorious. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I'm. And they're in every church. And there's the the. Uh, we had a pipe organist here who plays for churches, and she's very one of the top people in, who do it. It goes all over the world. She's based in New York. And uh, she has one of the greatest uh, attractions on my website, 
wow. at the, her video. People all over the world who know her. So I know that church music on pipe organs is really popular. Yeah, so machines can do wonderful things, too. Yeah. 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 Right, absolutely. She loved it. It was amazing. And Okay, great. And so uh, uh, you sit around. How does the idea come when you and Nina are working together? Who pop, Who comes up with the idea first? Or is it could be... It, it varies. It could be either one of us, really. Uh -huh. Yeah. And... I do, I do find I do find performance artists uh, very inspirational. I like working with them mm -hmm. because it's sort of on the on the edges, on the margins of art, yeah. where you can come up with something unpredictable or new. Very often, because you're not so constrained by form and tradition and history. Uh -huh. So I'm I'm excited by performance art. And now something's coming up with you. You're doing something coming up. Yes, we have a screening uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Tomorrow night would be Wednesday night. Yes, Wednesday night. January 30th, 2019. Right. right. All right, so if you watch this two months from now, <laughs> you already missed it. But uh, it, It'll yeah. be at the Tank, and it's uh, sponsored by an Asian-American group called The Model Majority. Mm -hmm. And it's primarily comics, I guess, but they're also expanding into music and performance and video. Where's the Tank? It's an experimental theater uh, place. Where's it located? Um, it's oh, not, how can I invite people to come <laughs> to it if it's not a secret location? I didn't know it was a secret oh, location. We'll have to Google that. I don't, I don't, oh, okay, that's all right. Google the tank. In Midtown. In, in Midtown. Kitchen. Google the tank in Midtown for tomorrow, Wednesday, at what time? 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. to see some of what it's going to be there. What are we going to see if we go there? Oh, mostly comics. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. But what's your role going to be? Well, we'll be uh, showing these same videos that you just saw, actually. All right, yeah, great. Yeah. All right. But it should be a good a good crowd. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like fun. All right, the tank. So you you provide the uh, background for the comic uh, routine, or oh, I, th I think it'll be a separate screening. A hopefully. separate screening, right? Yeah, I see. Hopefully, okay. yeah. All right, great, 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 great. All right, any other uh, upcoming performances or uh, showings? Well, I'm going to be having a, a concert at the Museum of the Chinese in the Americas mm -hmm. coming up in a few months. Right. So very technical. Uh, um, uh, how does uh, Asian ethnicity, does it really play your cultural heritage uh, into your, I mean, we saw Nina, of course, was using the Tang women and things like that, but is there something other than the images? Is there some, like, deep understanding grasshopper or any yeah. that kind of Zen? Well, I'm, I'm very you know. influenced by the Japanese metabolist architects. Uh-huh. Oh, what do they do? When well, they were during the 60s primarily, and uh -huh. they thought of machines creating architecture. Mm-hmm. In a, in a sort of modular way, oh, really? and and their buildings uh, show this very well. And and there was a lot of English practitioners also of yeah. metabolism. Metabolism, it's, yeah. Like is that sort of like transformers? Like you can open the doors and windows. Similar, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. probably it probably led to that. In the right. end. It changed the shape of everything yeah. and started everything. And some of these some of these great buildings are being destroyed now. Oh really? Yeah. Where? Where are they? In Japan. In Japan, right? Yeah. Why? By by the tsunami or by? Oh no, by economic right. pressure. Uh, to build bigger and bigger buildings. Right? Yeah. Right. I see. So, are you going to try and recreate that? Well, I I, I love that. Style. Are you working this into your uh, into your uh, architecture? Well, I also think that we may be forced to live off world soon mm -hmm. enough. All oh, right, and, and spacecraft and things right. like that. Right, and I I sort of. People have such a sort of dystopian view of it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to imagine that it could be something pretty wonderful as well. well I saw something about these homes. They're amazing. They're like a, a they're, they're a trailer, but they're not really a trailer. They're actually a house. You can pull it, you drop it somewhere, and it's like like this room with big windows. Though it's beautiful, it's totally insulated. You could live in like northern Wisconsin in 50 below weather and be warm and toasty. Oh, well, it's. Using technology for habitation is a very exciting yeah, field. Yeah, what they could do and to deal with homelessness, right? You could like have homeless people could create homes for them that I, you know I've helped do that. We created modular homes out of plywood and insulation and stuff back in the eighties and nineties for oh, homeless that's great. people. We did, and it was amazing. And that wasn't really uh, you know it wasn't architected out. I mean there were some architects involved, but it was basically sitting around with the materials and then trying to fit them together to make the thing work. And people lived in them. That's a good and thing. And we're happy to, which is sad, but that would be a great answer to homelessness, wouldn't it be? All right. Wow. Well, very interesting discussion. we got to keep going with this. I have to get Nina back on, right? We'll both very you guys, yeah. and we'll do this again. So thanks a lot. And it was a great, great show. Lauren, thank you Roser so much, Paul. for joining us. And we'll see you next week on Let Them Talk.